getting ready to go, waiting for Marlon to give me the thumbs up. Okay, we're good to go. All right, so my name is Bill Olson. I'm from Newswear. Um, what is Newswear? We're a news aggregation service. We've been doing this for about 25 years. Part of the keys to Newswear is we have access to all of the professional news wires that you're going to want to have access to for the breaking news. In addition to that, we do these in-depth filtering tools that allow you to pick apart the news stories to really dig down into them to find the most relevant stories according to what you're trading. You know, we're going to, I'm going to go through a quick presentation today that I'm going to switch over and I'm going to do this, uh, you know, little live demonstration of what Newswear is delivering. You know, most of the issues that people run into is they don't know what, what is relevant, what's relevant, what's not relevant, because there's so many news stories that's coming out every day. It's kind of hard to keep up. You know, there are certain vendors that are producing 20,000 news stories and it's all redundant. So we cut through that redundancy. We don't deal in redundant uh, news stories that are coming out. Or we have a method that we utilize to only show the story once so you don't have to deal with that redundancy. We allow for users to create targeted news alerts on the stories and subjects that matter. You know, I'll go into something like you know crude oil, whereas in you know when you had the uh, Saudi Arabia issue uh, two weeks ago, it's like you wanted you wanted to be on top of that. What were you looking for? You were looking for any ind indication, you know, from uh, for the additional hostilities. You were looking for indications from Saudi Arabia. There's no there's no ticker on oil. It's you know there, there's some news codes out there, but to really be effective there, you need to be able to do keyword searches. This is where Newswear really shines and comes through. We deliver full text of the story. So you see the headline and the full text is behind it. You, know, you can type in a keyword, someone's name, maybe an industry group, or keep something like rig count, uh, you know, the, the EIA or the API. Uh, of Saudi Arabia to find out what's going on in the oil industry every morning. I know I go through OPEC every morning just to see if there's any news. You know, we have the ability to search by tickers and keywords. Uh, we do something called Boolean fuzzy logic searches as well, which are and and, and not type statements. This is, rel you know, this can be really useful in order to avoid seeing duplicate stories. Uh, we're a data center based. We don't do cloud. I mean, cloud is, you know, if you look at any of the high frequency guys, cloud computing and the high frequency tradings are at opposite ends of the spectrum. So what we want to do is we want to ensure that what we are delivering is the information as fast as possible. And that's why we use the dedicated uh, connections that we have at our data center. You know, in terms of the professional content we have, access to all of the press wires, SEC files, a host of market intelligence wires and sources like Dow Jones, and multiple news feeds from Dow Jones. You know, we employ something called layering technology, which allows you to create an alert and build on it. So maybe you want to see an alert for, you know, a certain subset of stocks uh, in a specific industry. You want to layer that against a host of keywords or phrases, maybe a SEC filing type. That's what we do. You merge those two together, you narrow the output of the data. This is where the, you're going to really be able to narrow the focus and focus in on the stories that are, are important to you. With news where we have kind of sophisticated news alerting systems. I mean, one, you can make this thing pop up when a breaking news story hits. Two, you can have audio indicators go off when, when a news story hits that uh, meets one of your criteria. Three, you can have it so the headline is actually read aloud. You're not going to find it. These are the real news sources that are delivering this content primarily. They have that 
in a method where you're being alerted to first, it's highly beneficial. You know, you look at the, you know, the news, we can filter it to maybe just the stocks in the S&P 500 group. You know, you can see this, you know, when they're moving in the morning, hey, the S&Ps, the screws are most likely going to run a little higher. You know, yesterday, you know, I don't need to tell you, it was all about the PMI data coming out. You know, 10 o'clock, you know, I warned everybody. I said, watch that PMI number that's coming out at 10 o'clock. You saw what happened in Europe with their PMI numbers. They got hit. They got, they started to go into the red when theirs came out. Sure enough, the U.S., the same thing, 10 o'clock. Dow Jones hit it at 10 o'clock even. They have a spot in the lockup room in D.C. So as soon as that uh, 10 o'clock hour hits, they push out that story and we're delivering it instantaneously. You saw what happened to the screws after that. They just fell apart. And, you know, you, you have more continuation of that going on today. You know, I, I talked about layering alerts, and you know, I have this CEO alert that that I, I, and this is Bank of New York. You know, they, uh, you know, last week it was announced there was a CEO change. You know, the first half hour of trading, these stocks typically drop one to two percent when the CEO change is announced, and it's a, it's a new event. Like it's not like that same day you heard Wells Fargo come out, but that was kind of old news because if you followed it, you would have known that that actually happened in uh at the end of march so and the guy that was there was just a temporary ceo but when they do do announce the ceo move boom it's one to two percent there it is with bank of new york today it actually hit on uh, uh biogen b-i-i-b um stock dropped two bucks you know off of the news what i've noticed is it only lasts like the first half hour you know that that the the selling pressure hits and for the first half hour, you're going to see a big drop. Um, you know, from talking to people, it's very likely that, uh, you know, the mutual fund managers don't know the new CEO coming in. So they lighten their position a little bit. That's what I believe is causing the sell off. Uh, I have a long history of this not working. The only time it doesn't work is when the street hates the CEO, like there's a problem there. You know, think Papa John's, think Overstock. Well, those were problem CEOs. Since there's no way to really, uh, since there's nowhere really to see it, you know, I use the 52 week low instead, but it works pretty well. I do a lot with earnings trades, you know, with news where you can see who's reporting, it'll tell you who's reporting. Uh, it can give you, you know, you can grab information as to what they did last time when they were when they were reporting. We have all we store all years worth of historical news. But the main thing is when the updates come, they're very timely. Okay, let me see something. You know, this is the application. This is what you're seeing. This is what we're showing. Uh, on a daily basis. You know, these news stories are coming out 24 seven, coming out from all the vendors you need to know about. You know, if you just, you know, for S&P traders, you can just follow just the 500 stocks in the S&P, or maybe we do something where we wait and say, you know, let's let's take the top 30 most cap weighted stocks in the S&P and just follow those because they're really more likely to, to have a, uh, uh, an impact on the direction of the S&Ps that day. You look at my, my crude oil alert that I have set up, you know, I'm scanning for a bunch of key words here. You know, crude, I'm using news code, dot oil. I use WTI, crude oil. I use, you know, Department of Energy and uh, Energy Information uh, Administration and uh, API, OPEC, Saudi Arabia. This is what the alert focuses on. So when they come out with a news story, it appears here. You know, yesterday we had the API data came out, but today we had, uh, you know, the EIA, which showed the stockpiles rose by 3.1 million barrels last week. You know, the rise in inventory is bearish on oil prices. Um, 
you know, especially when you consider the, the API data suggests that a fall. Um, you can do hurricane names, you can do a number of, you can create your own alert or we could build it uh, with you, whatever works for you. If you wanna do something where you wanna watch all the news, yeah, you can do it. It's, there's just a lot. And when you do something like that, what you're, what you're gonna find out is a lot of it is erroneous. A lot of it doesn't matter. It's, it's, not, it's not going to be tradable items. Um, you know, you're looking for, when you're looking for news to really trade off of, you really need to be more precise. You know, the, I have these hot news items that I utilize. We do a lot with the metadata that's inside of the story. The metadata are the keys. It basically tells you what the story is about. So if it's an earnings story, it will have a tag for a dot earnings. If it's an oil story, it'll be tagged with the dot oil. A number of the news providers have this method of indications of hot stories. You know, look at this fly, you know, fire eye resumes trading. Hey, there's a there's a potential sale going on. The stock jumped four percent. This is something, you know, this story was tagged as it's going to be a hot story. You can see why. FDA warns about software vulnerability in medical devices. Yeah, I mean, it's been going on for a while, but I, I, it is a, these guys have a, at TT, have a hot news story called the breaking news. Uh, these people at Fly in the Wall have a hot news story called Hot Stop Fly. But Dow Jones has this one called Significant. And I'm telling you, this significant news code that they have is dynamite. I use it every morning. I scroll through all the stories that they put out under this their significant news code, and there's always there's always something you can find. Um, they are one of the they are one of the better wires out there because you know you're dealing with uh, the reporters from the Dow Jones News wires. You're dealing with reporters from Barrons and Wall Street Journal. They co-mingle them all together, and uh, you know they, whenever there's something that's hot they put it out under their significant news story. Whenever there's something going on in Washington, D.C., when they want to get a quote from a congressional leader or someone, uh, uh, you know, with a little cloud in the Senate, Dow Jones always has these reports. Another one I like to use these days is this trade talk. I mean, you know, it's, it's kind of simple when you think about it, but how do you filter the news to what's going on with the trade talks. I use the guy, I use the names of the negotiators. I put in Minutia, I put in Lighthouser, I put in the guys from China. Um, I put in key words like tariff and trade talks, trade war. And whenever there's a story that's uh, indicating that it's uh, about the trade talks, it appears in this newswire. I can have an alert set off that, you know, to make this pop up when uh, a new news story comes in. I could have the headline read aloud, or just I just have it beat myself. Um, but it's a good way to keep on top of the events that are happening uh, with the trade talks. And you know, we're selling off right now. We're selling off hard. I mean, it's it's really you know a couple issues. We got the you know we're still do, dealing with a little bit of a hangover from the PMI, and you got the World Trade Organization saying the U.S. could impose tariffs on 7.5 billion dollars worth of EU goods. Due to the subsidies of uh, Airbus, you know that that news sent the uh, euro markets into a tailspin. I follow this. I, I have World Trade Organization as one of the uh, key words inside of my uh, news alert here. I do a lot with the option news. I think the option news is you know. It puts me comfortable before taking a position, and I want to see something, you know, ahead of earnings, whether the activity is on the call side or the put side, you know, is the are the is it bullish on the on the calls? Is it bearish on the calls? I want to see this information. This options rumors that are, covers that for me. Again, the news vendors have codes specifically designed to deliver stories on options news. I enhance it. 
I mean, I, I, a lot of these stories have a lot of the same verbiage in it, such as put volume, call volume, chatter. So I took those words and I put them inside my alert. So whenever one of those, whenever a story comes out that has one of those key words in it, it automatically appears into my, uh, it automatically appears into my service. You know, someone asks, you know, who uses our service? And I, I, I deal with everybody on Wall Street. I deal with the big banks. I deal with the exchanges. I deal with, you know, the, the hedge funds. They're all using it in different methods. Most use our front-end applications. Others use our API. The API is used for, you know, a couple of different ways. Some use it for algorithmic trading. Others use it, uh, you know, for to put news into their front-end application. Think of the major broker dealers. They're, they're not that have a front end trading platform. They don't go out and get deals with all the, the, the news providers. They use a guy like me that already has them. That way it's a single connection. Um, I, I got 25 years worth of reliability. I got a good name on the street. They trust me. Otherwise they wouldn't be doing business with me all these years. One of the things that, you know, in the morning you can do like market updates, sector updates, a lot of the news wires carry this information. It's a quick read just to see if there's anything important going on out there. Um, ahead of the Fed meeting, I'd like to go back and reread the statements that came out from the various voting FOMC officials. I thought to myself, how do I do that? And I said, well, an easy way would just be put in all their names. So I took the time and I found all the FOMC voting members. I built an alert and I used all of their names. So whenever they're speaking, whenever there's a, a speaking and it gets picked up on a newswire, I have it. It shows I get to read it. You know, yesterday you got a guy speaking at 4 a.m. in London. Um, I, I was up, but I wasn't logged in here yet. But I was able to read it when I got into the office at 6. So it was, uh, it's a nice way to keep track of what's going on. What is this, James Bullard, Fed Chair? Yeah, you know, that happened, but he wants interest rates at zero. Um, you know, we'll see. Uh, but, you know, this, we had uh, the New York Fed, uh, you know, Williams talking today, defending the rate cuts, saying the economy's in a good place. That came out, that actually came out uh, a little earlier today. thing about news where is you know you, you want to stay on top of the breaking news events sometimes you know what those events are going to be whether it's going to be something like you know an earnings announcement you know that's information that's out there an economic release hey you know what you know what time they're coming out there but you got to be able to be able to see those you know economic releases in real time as they happen and not on a secondary source. It's vital. It is. You know what? Dow Jones has a guy in the lockup room. I tried to get a license. They, they told me no. They, they, they said no, I can't be in, in the lockup room because I'm not a real news wire. Well, I'm not, but I, I, I thought maybe I took a shot. Um, the fact is, is that Dow Jones has a spot in there. They only give out like 10 of these credentials. And when you have a spot in there, it's golden because you know you're going to be the first to report on the jobs numbers on, and, you know, any economic numbers that come out, you know, especially yesterday's PMI numbers. That was huge. SEC filings, we have them all. We got a good source for it. It's streaming all the contents coming in from, you know, a 10K to a 13F. I mean, I, I kind of like to filter the data just so I can see what the hedge funds are doing in their positions in various equities. You know, you can filter it down by filing. In terms of the SEC filings, there's about, I'd say, 5,000 different filings. We have a news code for each one of them. You can build it uh, an alert to cover all of them or, you know, just have all the news scrolling, whatever, make whatever is best for you. I do this FDA alert. I run through it every morning. I run through it because I'm looking for you know, something where it's a, a, 
uh, someone got some came out with their phase three trial results, maybe a new drug application. Um, this is where it comes out first. They come out over press releases first. So, you know, you want to see that you want to be able to just filter the news by the FDA alerts. And if you want to go a little bit more in depth, you can filter it by FDA alerts and significant stories. It just makes sense. These are the FDA stories or the FDA stocks that are going to move when you see it filtered in that method. You know, a lot of these drug companies, you notice, uh, they, they always, you know, they're always about to uh, get delisted and then they have to do a reverse stock split. But uh, prior to that, they come out with some big news event. And, you know, a week or so later, they come out with a, uh, uh, a secondary offer. Thing is, where do they release that? They're supposed to release it in an SEC document, but sometimes it comes out over a press release first. So that's why you'd have to have access to both the press release wires and the SEC filing if you want to do that type of trading. Good news is I got access to them both. If you want to do, you know, a simple list of just maybe 30 tickers, they set up a Dow Jones alert showing you all the stock, all the news stories that are coming in for those 30 stocks. If you wanted to, you know, do uh, more, that's not a problem. You know. The system can really handle, I think it's 35,000 characters, and that's a lot of uh, ticker symbols. If you need to do more than that, we just merge two alerts together, and uh, we'll, you know, the next thing you know, we have 70,000 characters. We have alerts that are pre-built and updated for the various indexes on the S&P, uh, S&P 500, 600, 100, the Russell 1000, 2000, 3000, and so on. You know, one of the nice things about Newswear is the fact that, you know, it's available in both a front-end application and as a web browser. You know, the, the reason why you want it as a web browser is at least that's why it's mobile. It works on your phone. It works on any browser. And if you're on your phone in the middle of nowhere, you can at least gain access to the content as it's streaming, even if you know, as long as you have cell phone reception. You know, the application, you know, the application will always be a hair faster be, just because of the technology. It's a TCP connection for the application, meaning it's not going through 500 different uh, internet pops like a browser would. But they're both very, they're, you know, if you're watching them side by side, you would only notice a difference in peak times and it's not significant, it's, it's maybe you know, half a second. But I just prefer the application myself because you know what, I, I've been using it, I've been using it for a long time. You wanna click on the story on Zendesk, you just double click, it appears, boom, down 4% after disclosing data breach. Oh, that's bad. Yeah, remember Equifax? What happened to those guys after their data breach? They're still recovering, you know. So with news where we have all these news codes that you can filter the data by. After hours, agreements, you know, brokerage recommendations, upgrades, downgrades, price target changes, you name it. If you want to do, you know, dividends or economic news, we have news codes for that. Um, you know, if you're doing Forex, we even have news codes for that. I even have alerts where I put in every currency uh, under the sun. So I'm capturing everything, any news story that's, co that's covering any currency topic out there. We also have a list of industry codes. You name it, we have it on there. You know, whether it's, you know, airlines, biotechs, you know, food, beverage, uh, you know, insurance. We have brokerage firms. We have all of them, you know. Uh, I can look at the brokerage firms. Everybody's going to zero, right? Yeah. Hmm. 
we have news files that we call topics. This is really designed when you want to get real in depth with a with a file. With what's what's constantly amazes me is all the news organizations, the publishers that use us. I mean, where do you think they get their news from? You know, some teletype? No, they, they, a lot of them get it from us. They subscribe to Newswear and they're rewriting some of the content that they see over Newswear and then publish and then publishing out uh, after we send it to them. So it's, you know, you get a different take on it. Maybe they add value to it by adding additional commentary, but uh, it's, it's quite surprising when you see that happening over and over again. You know, if you go into Newswear and you're looking to you know, see information, you know, we actually work with you. We have this function called live chat. This connects you, this can open up an instant message. This is how we can support you. You know what, if you want to do it through a, uh, a, you want to call us, we have, you know, support reps ready to assist you. If you want to talk to one of our technical guys, we have a technical team ready to assist you. If you want to you know, uh, talk about like the different types of wires that we offer, we have people here ready and willing to work with you and talk to you about the value of news at any time of the day you want to speak to us. Um, it's a good little product. It's been around for you know 25 years. You, know, you walk on you know the exchange floors, we're there. You go into the big hedge funds, and we're there. Why? Because we're delivering something unique. We're not just spitting out 500 stories. We're spitting out 200 intelligent stories. Stories of value. Stories that you can trade off of. Stories that make a difference. And when you have the news filtered in this type of format, it really does, you know, it really is a differentiator. I mean, and, you know, for what we charge, which is nothing, it's, it's, it's a gold mine every day. You go into, you know, the, the content providers that we have, Dow Jones, SEC Finance, the major press release wires. And then you have sources like, you know, Fly, Midnight Trader, Jag Note, Street Insider, uh, Ben Zinga, they all provide value. You don't have to subscribe to all of them for Newswear. It's an a la carte model. You tell me what makes sense for you. You know, listen, I like Dow Jones. I think it's a great news service, but it may not, might not be for everyone. If you want just some quick broker recommendations during the day, I can bring, I can deliver those. If you want to have, you know, just the press releases because you want to, you know, you have an equity play. I can create a package in that form as well for you. That's really the value that Newsor is. It's the content. It's the way we work with you and deliver you the information in a tight display of the quality data that you want to see. But you know, it's you're not going to find this in too many applications because you know why? It's hard to do. Our pricing model is tight. You can say, you might say that, hey, I get this news over my quote vendor. It's like, yeah, it's true. You might have it, but you're not getting the full feed. There's a difference between a full feed and a partial feed. A lot of the, the financial firms that are giving out uh, you know, news over their platform, they give you a scaled down version of a full feed. So they say they have the name. They really don't. They're, they're only giving you maybe 25% of all the stories that are coming across. We're direct licensing news firm. We have licenses with everyone that we do business with. And we say to them, full fee. We need to have your full fee. Don't give us a partial fee. Because if you start getting partial fees, you don't know what data you're missing. And I'm filtering the data. So I'm okay with missing the data that I don't want to see. But I'm not okay with you know, the publisher making that decision of what's important to me and what's not. You know, if you want to get a trial of Newswire, you can just go to our website, newswire.com. Send me an email. 
Come, come, you came in, you know, from this, uh, through top step, and uh, I'll take care of it. But this is one way to get in touch with us. You know, we get more information on the site. We do really have a lot of the key sources that you need that are important, especially in these markets. And this is October. We got a ton of earnings coming out this month. We got more trade talk news coming out uh, next week when they start talking on the 10th. And I, you don't know how they're, how it's going to go, but I, but I know for for certain that Trump's going to be tweeting, and I also know that the news reports are going to be picking up the information, and how else are you going to get the news reports out of China? We have it. We even have Chinese news services that are translated into English. So there's a benefit there that, that you can gain access to that you're just not going to get anywhere else. If you're, if you're getting your news off the internet. It, it's regurgitated information. It's late. It's already priced in. It's it's called white data. It's not giving you any type of an edge. If you're looking for an edge, you want to get the news sources that can provide that edge. That's what we do. We commingle all those news wires that provide an edge into one system. We can filter the news into the information that you want to see on a regular basis. You just can't do this type of market intelligence trading without the correct tools. Newsware is that tool. Um, if you go, if you if you look at our history, I mean, you know, we've been doing this since you know, let's just say mid '90s. Uh, you know, we've dealt with every broker dealer and hedge fund and exchange under the sun, and you know, we, we stay in business because, you know, we have a good pricing market. We stay in business because we deliver high quality content. Um, we're not trying to do anything more than be that, than be that vehicle that you utilize when you want to see the information on a timely basis and accurately. I mean, I could, there's a lot you can do with news, but at the end of the day, it comes over in headlines and stories. I can highlight those keywords that you're searching for. I can, you know, change around the uh, way the, the display looks, maybe not enter in the time or the vendor, just put the ticker symbol and the headline. Those things are all possible. But at the end of the day, it's about having access to the quality content. That's what Newswear delivers. And, you know, we also, you know, if you didn't, we're watching that PMI number yesterday, you know, we had it right on the money. That that, that was like the, the golden goose right there. Um, you know, when you have something like McCormick's earnings yesterday that came in strong, you know, we had that as soon as that report came out. Stock was up $3. You know, we have a new service that tells you the straddle price. The straddle price tells you the expected move of uh, the stock. McCormick was up $3, but the straddle price was priced for an $8 move. It's a divergence. Why? So it's on the fall of client. And they said, listen, it's priced for an $8 move. You know, it still has legs. It still has legs. I looked at the stock later in the day. Yesterday it was up $11. Yeah, it has legs. This is the type of data that you get over newsware. You need it. If you're not having real-time news from the correct sources and telling you what other people do, don't put yourself at a disadvantage. Use the good stuff, you know. And it's, uh, it's well worth having access to the best news wires, especially in a month like this one. You don't know where the market's going, but I smell October lows coming up. Um, you know, we could go back to that uh, 82 range in the S&P. Who knows? We're going to have to get some... Uh, Good news out of the trade talks in order to push this thing off this 87 level. So I don't know, that's that's what I got for my presentation. Does anyone have any questions or you know comments about newsware or anything you said? Uh, what's your email, Bill? Well, I'm Bill at brownboxfs.com. B-I-L-L at Brown box, F is in Frank, S is in Sam.com. Yeah, YFS stands for financial services. Brown box, FS. Couldn't you just make it Brown box? Brown box is uh, the firm that owns Newsware. We were owned by a big market data firm for years, but 
one day the guy woke up and decided, hey, I want to retire. And the funny thing is that some of these hedge fund guys called me up and they said, yeah, tell them I'm going to buy it. Just give me a number, Bill. And he said, no. And the ninth hour, he decided to sell in his way to this, these group of investors, which is now Brown Box. So it's kind of interesting. And those hedge fund guys were real guys. They're like the big guys on the street that, that you know, I shake when they call. And, uh, you know, it's me, the first names. I'm like, oh, my gosh. But it's all good. Uh, what else? Yeah, Bill, that's it. You got my email. Marlon's got it up there. What do we got on the trade talk news? Trump blamed stock market drop on impeachment. Um, okay, well, I don't, I don't really realize. I don't know if he was looking at the economic data as much, but okay, he can he can have his opinion. You know that call with uh, Boris Johnson uh, that wasn't that wasn't good for him. I'm sure. Uh, Sanders uh, undergoing the heart procedure. Yeah, I knew about that a little early this morning. Uh, that's the thing. A lot of news vendors always want to regurgitate the news. KT is night litter, Tribune Media. Um, it's a good source for local news, but in terms of trade and financial news, I, I'm not, I don't think it's the number one source. That's a great headline. Dow Jones says the, the, the drop is due to concerns about, you know, let's say economic growth, and Trump says it's because of the impeachment talk. All right. It's, well, if they stop talking about impeachment, will we go up? I don't know. These guys at ML is uh, MT Newswires. These guys do a great job with their sector analysis and uh, their option data. Their, their option news stories is fabulous. Look at that. You know, MT News was breaking down. He's giving me a sector update on healthcare, technology, consumer, financial, and energy. What I want to see throughout the day, they continually put these out. Oh, this is another little trick with news where you can have multiple windows kind of scrolling at the same time. Shares down 3.3%. Is well, A trade's going to have to go to uh, zero in their trading and their commissions as well. Could I demo focusing purely on ES and SPY? Well, I could. I mean, you know, here's, here's this is an alert that is set up for just the stocks in the S&P 500. Now, I could enhance it by typing in E-minis, um, but you, you really want to be able to create an alert based off of the information that is being written about by the news wires. So I'd have to look at to see how vendor A and vendor B and vendor C write about the E-minis and write about the S&P 500. Some, you know, if I, I can put an alert, I can create a quick request for SPY and see you know, all these news wires that are tagged with the ticker symbol SPY, but I could also do SPX, you know, or I could merge those two together. But you see how it's kind of giving you different stories depending on how they're tagged and how the vendor puts it together. Um, you know, every vendor has a different method of what they use in order to uh, uh, follow a specific security, which is why we build alerts. So I can create an alert for S&P 500 and you know, would show me every story that has that <laughs> phrase, S&P 500. 
and could do E-minis as well, too. So it would just filter out, it would filter out any news story that doesn't have the word, keyword S&P 500 and just show you those scores that pertain to the exact search that you're looking for. Cool, glad you liked it. Um, you know, really good stuff that I have to say about Miller. It works, you know, I mean, I've been using it for years. I, I, we, we got a who's who client list, you know, I mean, if you if you saw it, there, there are a lot of the big name guys in the street, and why, the reason why they use us is because we have access to the, the quality data they want. You know, if you think of first call, you know, like, this is where the real research comes out. This is the PDFs coming out from the brokerage firm. This is the direct link that's coming out from Morgan Stanley, the JP Morgan, and Goldman Sachs. When they put out their research notes, it comes out in a full text PDF. It goes into the first call network. We're one of the few distributors that has access to that news store. Have to be approved to get this data. They don't give it to just everyone. You have to show that you have an account with these brokers whose research you want to see. But where else are you going to get access to these PDFs? And they don't make it easy anymore. Um, we're one of the only vendors out there that, that has access to all the brokers. I think there's like, you know, there's actually like you know, 6,000 brokers that we have access research to. But when you cut out, out all the Eastern European Chinese, it's, it's down to like 1,000. That's what we really focus on, um, mainly because we can't speak Chinese. And so we kind of stick with the languages we can understand the text and um, I guess that makes sense. Uh, would e-mini traders be more interested in your newswatch, newswatch.com or API? Depends on how they're trading. You know, I mean, listen, if you have an API off of the news, I've seen guys that do it. Most are not successful creating and use API to trade based on the scoring of keywords. It's really difficult to do. A lot of these algorithmic traders are using news as a volatility indicator. So what they do is when there's news out on the stock, they pull that stock out of their list to trade, out of their, their to trade list for the day because news is going to create volatility. So they don't want the volatility in their algorithm. So if they see that, hey, there's a new story out on ticker, you know, GMC, they pull GMC from their list of trade stocks. You know, if you're doing, if you're, you know, algorithmic trading is not for everyone. You know, you need to have, you know, someone willing to do the programming and create the system. You know, with Newsware, the front end application, it's really good enough. Um, the reason why is because you know the key reports that you need to watch. We create alerts for those keywords, and when those stories come out, it's displayed, and you know the position you're going to take as soon as that news breaks. You know, it's a fact that you know breaking news can can blow up any technical charts that are out there. Um, you just need to be aware of it. And you need to have access to it the moment these stories hit, and that's what Newsware provides. That's what Newsware delivers. Uh, you know, how does it differ? Well, you know, News, Newswatch is an is a application. It's an application-based service. Newswatch.com works in a browser. There's no real functionality difference inside them. You can create alerts in both of them. You can create topics in both of them. They both will give out, you know, uh, a, you know, alert settings where you can, you know, get notification. Um, as I said earlier, when you're dealing with a TCP connection of an application, it's always going to be a, a faster than any browser-based version out there. And that's mainly because of the technology. Uh, which costs less? You know, it's the thing. We're, you're basically being charged for the news wires you wish to subscribe to, you know, so Dow Jones, you know, if you want access to Dow Jones, I, I have it. It's 95 bucks a month. I can provide it to you um, at that rate. 
there are at some broker firms they have bigger deals with them and their rates are a little lower but they pay a site fee on top of that my rates pretty darn good um, I'm really competitive. They offer two different versions of Dow Jones. Actually, they're there for three different versions of Dow Jones. There's the global, there's the regular broad tape, and then there's the, the market watch. Um, the regular broad tape is really the, the 95. That's, that's the one most people utilize. And if you have access to it through us, you also get access to you know, wallstreetjournal.com barons.com and their news plus service which are information based sites um you know but the, the, you know it's kind of a nice model and you're not being you know when it doesn't make a difference whether you're using the web version or the application version you just can't be logged in twice at the same time but you could use either you could use the same id and run either one um, you just gotta ask us to do that and we can set that up for you. All right, that's I guess that's my great presentation for the day. Um, again, if you have any questions, please give me a call. My number is 212-612-2262. My email you see up there is uh, bill at brownboxfs.com or just uh, you know, throw a message to me at uh, newsway.com and uh, I can set you up with an ID and work with you and show you ways to utilize the news in order to trade with. Um, and uh, if you have any uh, questions, just uh, you can contact me directly or through the guys at Top Step. We're all here to help. All right, guys. Thank you so much and uh, I'll be talking to you soon. Bye. Thank you.